You've had an hour or so to kind of, you know, take it all in. And what, what was kind of the reception like when you got backstage uh, from everyone? And, you know, what, what were people saying to you? Uh, it was a little overwhelming. Uh, you know, it's just, I didn't get hurt that bad. You know, my, my head's clear, but it was just so chaotic. I don't really remember the fight. Uh, so everybody just saying how great of a fight it was. And I was like, well, I, I guess it was if you guys keep saying it. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, talk to me about the time in the second round. They seemed to have you in a bit of trouble, actually. Uh, you know, it was a back and forth fight, and he, he obviously had his moments. Uh, did you ever feel in real trouble at all? No, I, um, with the head shots or the body shots? Well, both. They must have both. Um, at the very end of the second, he hit me with a, with a knee that hurt, and then uh, I kind of tried to play it off, and he went right back to my body with a punch, so I knew that he saw. But uh, when I had him rocked, and then I was went with a huge flurry and then uh he hit me with a shot and it backed me up it, it was because i got tired um i decided to go on defense and and recharge my battery and let him uh blow his wad and then go right back so i wasn't in any any real danger and what was kind of the emotion uh obviously when you did get your hand raised is this one of the best victories of your career so far i mean it sounds like it huh <laughs> i'd like to watch it again but uh you know, maybe when I get a couple hours of sleep and, and let my body heal up before I watch this one. And what, what's kind of the plan now for, I guess, the rest of the years uh, to head back home and for the holiday season? But when do you kind of want to get back in there in 2017? Um, I, I just want to go home, uh, spend some time with all my family, enjoy the holidays. Um, you know, over 13 years, I've really, you know, sacrificed a lot and been very selfish with my time. So, you know, at this point in my career, I really enjoy my, my downtime. So I'm going to do that. And then, you know, if the UFC calls me for a big fight, you know, I'll be open to hearing it. Hey, uh, I, I know you said that uh, you're going to have to, you know, go back and watch the fight and sort of see how it sort of played out. But just being in the cage, where does this rank in terms of uh, some of your favorite performances in your career? Because this was a fight that I think when people look back at the card, they're going to say this was a fight they'll remember. Well, yeah, um, I, I'm happy for that because at this point in my career, it's like, why am I still doing this? I don't want to be declining in my performances. I feel like if I start declining my performances, then I shouldn't do it anymore. Um, but I feel like after 13 years, I've, I've been doing everything possible to get better, be better. Um, my last two fights before this one, I had a specific game plan to, you know, the things that Frankie Edgar exposed to me, I, I fixed and, and I, I showed that. And then this fight, you know, was a, was another fight that uh, made me you think about my Max Holloway fight, that loss. So, you know, I was challenging myself a lot in there and, and being able to, to, you know, showcase my skills once again and, and, and be a better version of myself, you know, just makes me happy. Fresh off the win here, but uh, you fought a lot of guys in the featherweight division already. Is there one that sort of stands out to you as far as a next fight that you'd like to have if you could play matchmaker yourself? Uh, honestly, I don't care. I just want a big fight. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, I think I deserved it. I've been here a long time. Uh, just, just stop doubting me. Hi, Cub. Uh, just a couple of questions. You mentioned how chaotic that fight was. Obviously, we all saw it. What, what can your corner possibly be telling you in a fight like that that's useful to you at all in this situation? You know, we had a, a certain game plan, um, just just kind of moving and not being a stationary target. Um, I didn't really feel like that was working for me. And uh, I kind of knew in the back of my head that at some point I was going to have to brawl with him, but I wanted to kind of like break him down a little bit before I brawled with him um, because he had so much success in the first round. Um, but then my coaches were telling me in between uh, rounds, like, you're doing better when you pressure him. Just get right in his face. He doesn't like it. And uh, I didn't really want to hear that because I was tired. But uh, I was like, all right, that's what we got to do. Uh, I'm taking more damage backing up, so I need to push forward. And I know he'd been calling you out for a while, which some might perceive as disrespectful. But after going three rounds with him like that, uh, what are your thoughts on Choi now? Um, well, all the film I watched on him, I was a fan of his before the fight. And, uh, you know, when he called me out, I, I definitely thought it was a little disrespectful just because I felt like he only called me out because he thought I'm you know, it wasn't as good as I used to be or something. And uh, it motivated me. And uh, I was ready to come out here and prove him, prove everybody else wrong. Hey, Cub. Uh, Dave from Hammer MMA. So uh, you obviously have fought before against Jose Aldo and Max Holloway, who now hold the interim and the main belt for the Featherweight division. 
do you want to get back in there with both of those guys or either of those guys? And are you planning on keeping busy or would you let other wait until the opportunity rises to strike at the belt? Um, we'll, we'll see. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd definitely love to fight both those guys. Um, I, I'd love to watch that fight. You know, at the end of the day, I'm, I've always been a fan uh, as well as a fighter. I started as a fan. So, uh, you know, when these matchups get made, I, I get super excited to watch them. So I'd love to watch that fight. And then, you know, if I'm the next one in line, then so be it. And, and you come from a camp with some of, the, some of the best fighters in the world. You, Donald Cerrone, and uh, your partner, Lando Venata, all won tonight. How awesome is it to be training with three guys, four guys who are going to peak at the same time? And what's the celebration party going to look like when you guys get back to Albuquerque? Um, it, it was awesome. I think I'm the most proud of uh, Lando. Uh, he's been a training partner for a long time, always putting in the, the hard work. I've been telling people about him for maybe four years now. And uh, seeing him win earlier tonight uh, made me super happy uh, to see guys, you know, that, that have watched their career, you know, just rise. It, that, that was special. But I was telling the guys backstage, it was right when the main card started, you know, with, with Tim Kennedy and Cowboy and me and Lando and all the coaches were just kind of like weaving in the, the, the workout room and everybody kind of was focused and it, it looked like sharks in the water. It was it was pretty crazy. Uh, it was a powerful room and, and we knew that uh, it was going to be a good night for us. All right, Cub, Matt Cole, Art Voice. Uh, congratulations on a big win. Thank you. Um, you're number four or you were number four coming into tonight. Uh, coming off of a decision, but a very high-profile win. And usually that means somebody looking up in, in rankings, but uh, a lot of people are already calling for this to be a fight of the year candidate, myself included. Uh, usually that means a rematch. Is that something, even though he's ranked number 11 coming into this, is that something you'd be interested in? Uh, what are your feelings on that? <laughs> I, I don't really see the need for it. Um, I've never been given a rematch for my losses. So I don't really feel like giving anyone a rematch for my wins until I get the Chad Mendez, the Lamas, the, the Holloway, the Aldo, all the bigger fights that I've lost. I, if I got those rematches, I'd be open to some of the ones that I actually won. Hey Cub, congratulations on your, on your win. Thomas Lee Rice on television. Uh, question is, were you surprised at the hard chin that Duhoy had? You were just giving it to him, but he was just standing there I was definitely surprised. Uh, I was surprised on his quickness. I thought that I'd be a lot faster than him. Um, he was he was kind of getting me to bite on some of his fakes, and, and so that's one of the reasons I switched up my game plan. And uh, uh, definitely his toughness when I started giving it to him. I, I could not believe, I could not believe uh, how fast he was recovering. And... Uh, He's definitely got heart, and, you know, I'll be a fan of his forever. One last, one last question is, uh, how would you like the standing ovation you received after the interview with Rogan? Uh, I didn't even notice it, to be honest. Uh, I think that's awesome, though. That, that's, that's why I do this sport. That's what it's all about. And, um, you know, I've always fought with my heart on my sleeve and, and give it everything I got. Uh, obviously, you guys see how emotional I always get, but that's, that's how much I put into it. So, you know, something like that, it, it makes it all worth it. Hey, Cub. Cub, over here. Um, you'd mentioned basically that he kind of got you to train harder and want to, you know, step up in this. But it seems like, too, you know, after those couple losses, we weren't talking about you anymore, really. I mean, do you need that kind of motivation at some point, you know, when you've been around the game that long to say, you know what, man, this people are sleeping on me or this guy's sleeping on me to get better? Um, yeah. It's nice sometimes. But uh, I've, always, I've always showed up in shape. I've never missed weight. I've always been a professional. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily need that. But uh, every fight's different. Every fight's a different journey. And, and so each one, you just kind of got to deal with it, you know, the way it comes at you and, and make the best of it. So this one in particular, I was fired up for. And, uh, you know, it turned out to be a great fight. Kelby, just here. Say yourself, you, you, you were a fan before you were a fighter. Uh, there was a moment there at the kind of end of the second round, and the fans here in Toronto have waited three years to, for a good USC event to be back here. 
there was a moment where the entire crowd were on their feet and you kind of gave them that moment. Does that mean something to you? And did you kind of take a minute to kind of take it all in towards the end? Well, it definitely means a lot to me because there's a lot of people talking crap about this card and it was the forgotten card and, and uh, I was a little disrespected by that. And, you know, people were even talking about boycotting the card. Uh, so I was just like, okay, you know, I, I never, I never try to be in a boring fight. So, you know, when we got, you know, Cowboy added to the card and a couple other studs, the card just started to get looking better and better. So, um, I'm glad that people got their money's worth and, and um, I'm happy to, to have contributed. Is there something about this place? Because four years ago you had a KO of the night here. Yeah, you know, I, I wasn't really stoked about it because I don't really like the cold, but uh, this is a beautiful city. Uh, I can't deny that I've, I've had good luck here and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I had the performance here and, and I'm glad I was around a great crowd. That's a fight. Hey, Cup, congratulations. Um, when you say, you know, stop doubting me, who are you directing that to? Um, the media, the people. It, it just, you know, I'm, I was the number uh, four ranked guy. This guy had a lot of hype, but I'm, I'm the veteran. I'm, I've been around. Um, I caught a glimpse of the odds. I think I was like at like a negative 300. Duhu Choi was the favorite by negative 300. So, I mean, three to one underdog, that's pretty ridiculous to me. You know, I know he had a lot of hype, but I took, I took a little offense to that. Did you feel like this was one of those matchups where there's this young guy who's doing so well, who, you know, comes from a, a market that the UFC is trying to build and they're putting in the veteran against him to try to build his name? Did you feel like you were kind of being backed into a corner? Um, a little bit. You know, they were giving him the opportunity to shine. Uh, I felt like... Uh, he, he was getting a lot of hype, and, and, and I see why. I mean, uh, there are some great Korean fighters. He's definitely a talent. He's fresh meat, you know, and um, the, it, the featherweight division's been a weird division. All the guys at the top have been at the top for so long, and it, it's the fans, it's nice for them to get some new guys coming in. And uh, I could see why they would want him to be right up in the mix. Um, but I just felt like I wasn't going to let him make, make a name um, – for himself off of me and uh, he could do it to somebody else just not me and as someone who is you know on a roll and at the top of the division how do you feel about the state of the division you know with, with connor leaving he was the champion he beat aldo in impressive fashion do you feel like him relinquishing or vacating the title and not being a part of the division do you feel like there's something missing there's there's not that you know that king to to shoot for because he's gone now no, not at all. I'm glad he's gone. Um, not a fan of the guy. Uh, he didn't want to defend his belt. I don't think anybody thought he was going to come back down to 145. It's obviously a hard cut for him. Um, it, it was ridiculous, all these guys fighting great fights at, in the 145-pound division and not having something to shoot for with a guy that's not even fighting in our weight class anymore. So I think at first people might talk and, and – uh, have negative things to say, but you know, once once uh, Aldo and Holloway probably fight and things get you know cleared up and, and new guys are coming in, I think it's going to be for the better. One last thing: Are you not eager to jump back in there? Like you said, you're you're going to come back if the UFC offers you you know a big fight. You said you've done this for 13 years. Are you going to be more strategic now with the kind of fights that you're taking? Have you reached that point? Uh, I think so. You know, it's. Uh, I got the, my UFC gym coming out, uh, UFC gym Costa Mesa, me and Bisbing starting the gym. And uh, I'm excited to get back to work and it's gonna open in a couple weeks. And you know, I wanna focus on that. I wanna focus on just staying in shape and, and enjoying it. And uh, you know, I, I fought three fights, you know, back to back to back. And uh, you know, I wanna treat my body right. So uh, I definitely will be excited for a big fight. Thanks. Cobb, uh, one last question. So you mentioned uh, you've always had a lot of love for your, for your friend, Groovy Lando. Did you see the kick, and how excited were you? Yeah, it was like 20 minutes before I had to check in downstairs to come over here, so we, we threw it on Fight Pass. And, uh, 
you know, I, I sparred him. He wasn't the style of guy I needed. Um, but I sparred with him a bunch of rounds just because I knew that he would push me and uh, we would have some epic rounds. And, uh, you know, so I've seen all his moves before. I know what he does. I know what he brings to the table. Um, I just think, you know, he's the, he's the future. He's one of those guys. And uh, he needed a big win to, to come back off after his loss because there was a lot of hype on him. And uh, he performed and, you know, it just made me proud. And are you and are you guys gonna have a money fight with the fifty thousand dollar bonuses you're both likely to win? I'm gonna try to teach him how to not to spend it. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach him how to be you know real frugal and uh, and be smart with our money.